I was gonna get this bad boy off. Hello bees. Hi bees. In London, it's estimated there are around 500 managed beehives in people's gardens and on rooftops. Today, we're going to try and get inside the hive mind of an urban bee colony. All around the world, humans love the sweet taste of honey. Whether it's in our urban jungles or the depths of the Congo rainforest, people often go to extraordinary lengths to get their hands on it. Chris from Barnes & Webb is one of London's urban beekeepers, managing over 40 hives across the city and producing gallons of honey every year. So who better to introduce me to this urban colony? Right, so we know the queen is in there somewhere. So what are we looking for? Well, the queen, she's not marked. She'll probably have a few bees kind of sniffing around her, following her around, and hopefully she'll be laying eggs. And she should be in this middle bit. You have to keep your eyes peeled. Feeding like wow. honey as well. We've just taken out one of the frames from the middle of the hive and we have spotted the queen. And you can see her because she's a little bit longer and her abdomen is sticking out. So people might think that because these bees are being kept in a city that there'd be a lack of um, places for them to forage, but is that just not the case? Well, conversely, people think that bees don't do well in cities, but because there's year-round food for them, they can do better than they do in the countryside. Mm -hmm. I keep bees in the countryside, and one of their main food sources is the rapeseed, and we find that it, it gives a really strong-tasting honey. What does this urban bee honey taste like? It's slightly different all around the city. Like We've got some down in South London, and someone described that as elderflower and champagne. <laughs> in South London? In South London, well in Kensington, so it's perfect. <laughs> because it's a medley of various different pollens and, and nectars, it's quite hard to put your finger on it, but generally they're very floral and light. If one of the foragers is out and finds an amazing source of food, how do they communicate where a good foraging spot is? By magic, they do something called the waggle dance that somehow tells the other bees where to fly and what direction it's, yeah, it's magic. Now, this is where things get a little bit complicated with the waggle dance, but bear with me. OK, so the sun's behind the clouds today, but we all know that the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west. Bees, when communicating a good food source, will use the sun's location in the sky as a way of orientating themselves. So let's say they come back to the hive, they found a really good juicy spot to forage, and it's four o'clock in the afternoon. The sun would be here in the sky, just behind that building. Now, if they drop the sun to the horizon and draw an imaginary line between me, the hive, and that spot, this line will then give the bees a vertical line on a frame inside the hive. It's a little bit like the starting point on a dance floor. Now, if this really good source of pollen and nectar is five degrees to the right of the location of the sun at this point in the day, that is the angle that the bees will do the waggle dance on. If the food source is directly in line with the sun in the sky, they'll just dance straight up on a vertical. What's more, the bees are communicating far more information than just the direction of the food source using the waggle dance. The harder and more intently they waggle, the better the food source. And the longer they waggle for, generally speaking, the further away the bee would have to travel to get to that source of pollen and nectar. Roughly about one second of dancing equals one kilometre of flight from the hive to the food source. So one bee dancing all on its own wouldn't be able to survive. But when you have a whole colony, this hive mind using intelligent behaviour and the waggle dance are able to find enough food to support up to 70,000 bees and thrive. We've made this film to celebrate the release of Planet Earth 2. So to see some behind the scenes clips, then click on this link. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you soon on Earth Unplugged.